introduction. Um, like you said, I'm Kevin Meyer. I'm one of the PGY3 neuro residents. I've uh, been on the neuro opto, neuro ophthalmology rotation for three and a half weeks. I'm a little far from where I want to end up. I'm uh, planning on doing a critical care fellowship in a year and a half. Uh, but at least I know what the back of the eyeball looks like now. <laughs> um, and I'd like to thank my, my BFF and she who has listened to me practice this. And she was also mentioned. Uh, but I love this dog. So this is a patient that I saw with Dr. Warner. Uh, he was a 65-year-old uh, right-handed male who was referred to the clinic for diplopia. The diplopia is vertical and strictly binocular. And he's a dentist and his primary concern is whether or not he's gonna, what did I say? Oh, yeah, binocular. So uh, he's worried about his ability to continue practicing. He first noticed it in 2009 and kind of over the years it's become more and more constant. Uh, he's, he's seen other ophthalmologists who have tried prisms <coughs> that did not help significantly. Uh, and the main issue was he's able to, to focus through his loops, but when looking off laterally, uh, he, he gets the, the double vision. And um, through the loops, his, his uh, depth perception is impaired. <coughs> he's a, a pretty healthy guy. He's wore glasses or contacts all his life. He has atrial fibrillation, for which he's on aspirin 325. He was on warfarin, but his CHADS-2 score was low enough that he got demoted to, to just an aspirin. No prior uh, neurologic history and no alcohol, tobacco, or drugs. <coughs> On exam, his uh, visual acuity was 20-20, color vision was normal, stereo vision was slightly impaired, and uh, no, no <coughs> afferent pupillary defect, and visual fields were, were intact bilaterally. Um, <coughs> his uh, eye movements were, were intact. On down, down gaze and when looking laterally, uh, he did have downbeat nystagmus. Also, when looking through the, through the slit lamp, we were able to detect uh, a very subtle uh, downbeat nystagmus in primary gaze. <coughs> looking off, or in primary gaze, he had a right hyperphoria of two, and it increased when looking to the right, and he had a left hyperphoria of one when looking to the left and his uh, optic nerves were, were normal. So here's a, a video of his, uh, his nystagmus. <coughs> it's, uh, he's gonna look down and to the left in one second, and it's, it's a little bit more, more evident there. And off to the, to the right. And, and like I mentioned, we were able to detect it in primary gaze um, on the, through the slit lamp. So to summarize, he has the, the downbeat nystagmus, uh, the alternating skew deviation, and then the, the remainder of his, exam, his neurologic exam was, was normal. No ptosis and no, no fatigability, specifically looking for uh, myasthenia and uh, no, no cerebellar findings, and that was two neurologists uh, looking. Um, and so, uh, to talk about a few of these things, the downbeat nystagmus, um, it's felt to, to result from an interruption of the vestibular, or the vertical vestibular ocular pathway. Um, this would localize to the cranial medullary junction uh, and, the, and or the cerebellum, and then there's various medical causes uh, that can contribute. So in just an imaging study of, of 24 patients with downbeat uh, nystagmus, Six of them had an Arnold Chiari malformation, six had cerebellar atrophy, two had demyelinating disease, and in the remainder there was no, no obvious um, imaging finding. So the, the differential includes um, primary cerebellar degeneration, uh, various uh, s congenital or structural malformations, specifically those that are compressing the, the brain stem or or cerebellar, or the cerebellum, such as an Arnold Chiari malformation, or various vascular abnormalities that can compress the brain stem, or uh, demyelinating disease or ischemic lesions in, in those areas. Um, thinking about other causes, 
Toxicity with lithium, phenytoin, carbamazepine, or alcohol uh, can contribute low magnesium or uh, a Wernicke's encephalopathy. <coughs> Alternating skew deviation. Uh, when looking in one direction, you have a hyperphoria of one eye, and in the other direction, a hyperphoria of the other eye. Most often, when looking to the right, the right eye is hyperphoric, but it, it's not, not always like that. Um, and this is thought to result from a bilateral injury to the central graviceptive pathways that run from the midbrain uh, down to the medulla. And in a study of 47 cases, uh, 29 of them had pretectal lesions in the midbrain and five had uh, lower brainstem lesions. So the differential diagnosis here includes um, hydrocephalus and tumors, anything, really anything that can compress in the posterior fossa. Um, strokes and demyelinating disease in, in those locations, spinal cerebellar disease such as uh, uh, atrophy, and then herniation syndromes and other um, Chiari malformations or vascular abnorm abnormalities that can compress uh, as well. So combining these two, really we just drop off the, the medical causes. Uh, those aren't really thought to be related to alternating skew deviation. So <coughs> the differential um, is left with cerebellar degeneration, uh, cranial cervical compression, uh, demyelinating disease, and a stroke. So for this guy, our first step in evaluation was to get a brain MRI. And also, we know he's not, we knew he was not on any of the meds that are known to, to contribute to the, the down gaze, or the downbeat nystagmus. So we got the brain MRI and it was normal. Uh, there was no cerebellar atrophy, no Chiari malformation, no signs of demyelination and, and no ischemia. Here is a, a mid-sagittal um, cut from his, his uh, brain MRI. So um, for him, the, the next step is, is some, uh, some labs to, to further work it up. Um, the Wernicke's was on the, the differential of the downbeat nystagmus. He's a walking, talking, practicing dentist, so it's a little less likely, but we'll get a thiamine level, a B12 level. <coughs> Anti-GAD antibodies and, and vitamin E can both uh, uh, affect the cerebellum, and then um, a CMP and, and a magnesium level uh, is, is on the docket for his further workup. And we'll see what happens. So did, did he 